So welcome. This is Karen Lindwall Borg, the president of the National Association of Christian Women Entrepreneurs and the International Christian Mompreneur Network. What a mouthful is that? You're going to come up with a, so NACWI for short. Uh, we've just merged the two organizations together, hoping to serve women in a mightier way and in, in a more uh, streamlined way on a daily basis, if we possibly can. I think we are doing that as we speak. So welcome. We're glad to have you. I'm going to do a quick prayer for us, an introduction of how we're ending up a three-month series on growing as individuals and as business and ministry owners and on telling people what we do and how we do it, the who, what, when, where, why, and how of all of that. And then how, where we're getting, I'll give you an introduction to where we're getting ready to start in July as well. So let me share a screen really quickly. And let me pray for us. Father God, we are so grateful. It's been an amazing three months of growing. I'm, a, I'm overwhelmed to a degree and, and pleased, pleased and thrilled that there was seemed to be a nugget almost every day of this month on, or these three months really, of how to grow, Lord, and how to grow a business and a ministry that pleases you. What more could we ask for? but that you would say, well done, good and faithful servant, when we've um, made some progress. And we never, never, none of us ever want to walk down a path that wasn't ordered, our steps weren't ordered by you, the path wasn't ordained by you. So Lord, I pray for every Christian woman entrepreneur in our groups, that's many, many people, anyone who might listen to these recordings later and pop in on this later. And I pray a special blessing over them and what you've called them to do. And I pray that you equip them to do what you've called them to do in mighty ways and in ways that please you. And we ask that we bless Roberta as she brings the psychology of sales to us today. And we end this three month season of growing and telling and start a brand new season of writing and dressing for success and planning towards the end of our year. And we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. So this is, you sort of got the layout in the prayer, actually, but really we're, we've done for April, May, and June a series on growing and telling where every week we've had a different expert come in, Christian woman entrepreneur, mompreneur, to talk to us about different ways to grow. And we used John Maxwell's book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth, to do that. Um, interestingly, I had a mastermind in that book going at the same time. We're almost done. We have a few more weeks to finish up. And so I got a double dose of that book, plus just reading it again and again, over and over again. It's been an amazing experience for me. I recommend it highly. I also recommend masterminds if you're not in one or leading one highly, because they just, to learn from other women, sort of rub shoulders with other women. I wish we could all sit in this office together but we're spread out all over the country. It, it is an invaluable experience. I love learning from other Christian women entrepreneurs. It's what makes my world go round in this arena for sure. So today we will finish up. We will hear Roberta Fontroy, who has been in the marketing for like three decades and who is an entrepreneur in her own right and interesting ways that we met. I'm just so grateful that the Lord brought us together and we've been able to do some work together. But every time I ask her a question, she sends me something by email. I'm blown away. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just put together so well. I love that about you, Roberta. And I love that you have worked with me some and that you have prayed with me some. As a Christian women entrepreneur, you're, you've become an intimate part of my community, of my family. It means so much to me that you have. So that's how we'll finish up today. So if you popped in today thinking that I was going to run over you with a hundred ways to grow and a hundred ways to tell, which I said I would, I'm going to renege on that and actually send everyone who has been in any of these Christ, uh, community and education webinars, April, May, and June. So we'll go back and look through Zoom, our Zoom account and write down everyone who showed up at all, even if just for a few minutes, and we'll send you those in the mail by the end of the month. I think there'll be lots of fun and very encouraging. And it's just a list, essentially, 100 ways to grow and 100 ways to tell, but what I'm trying to do is sort of annotate it into a booklet for us 
later. So maybe by the end of the year, we'll have the booklet put out there. Very excited about that. Then in July, just to kind of give you a prep, in July, we're having a writing retreat at the end of the month. We can give you a link to join us for that writing retreat. We still have a few beds open. We are going to speak all week, all month long about writing well, and the lineup is an amazing group of people. We are so appreciative of their willingness to come in. And it looks like we'll have not just, you know, the four Tuesdays, but the four Tuesdays and the, the last Tuesday, there's five Tuesdays in July. So we'll have five speakers. And then the Monday before the last Tuesday and the Wednesday after the last speaker, we'll have extra speakers on writing well. So tune in for that. In August, we're talking about dressing up for success from dressing up us to dressing up your brand, your Facebook profile, your LinkedIn profile, anything that you need to present well. And then in September, we're going to talk about purposeful planning. We usually talk about planning in September or October so that you can finish your year with a bang and so that you can actually, if you want to plan, which I do, try to plan my whole next year out, at least in some sketch manner. You know, I've got a plan going so that I can build on it as we grow. So hope you'll, you'll join us for all of those. Um, I was going to talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about in July, but I think I won't. Or maybe I will. I don't know. So I'll tell you, Kim Stedman, who's in the room, is going to kick our month off. I usually kick our month off, but she spoke, has spoken for us before and uh, does an excellent job. And I thought it would be great since she is the right more right now guru. It would be great for you to hear her, let her kick off the month of writing well for us. Um, and she's going to talk about framing your aim, finding the clarity of your writing message before you write one word. Uh, I'm sure it saves us a lot of energy and a lot of time to know what we're going to write about before we sit down and start cranking it out. Um, then we're going to hear from Lindsay Hartz, Cassie Lennox. Lindsay's going to talk about marketing and launching your written project or how to la launch your written work or book without losing your mind. Very important. Cassie's going to come. Lennox will come to us next. Sharon. Wilharm will come. She's going to talk about visual storytelling, using filmmaking techniques to enhance your writing. Melody, who's in the room today, welcome Melody, won't show us her face because she's undone, is going to, I've actually done these webinars with wet hair, Melody, so <laughs> okay. point a finger at you there. Uh, I haven't done one in my pajamas yet, <laughs> and I don't think that I will, but I have Chased a cow through the mud and come here, just barely made it with and had wet hair. At least I wasn't muddy. So you're welcome anytime in any way. She's going to talk to us toward the end of the month about writing to inspire, identifying your key passion, identifying your target audience, and transforming your key passion into inspiration. Therese Kay is going to come to us next and talk to us about enhancing your writing with photography. I hope she tells us a little bit about digital. It's about digital photography. That's all I know. I don't know how to hold the camera the other way. And then uh, Annette Bridges from NACWI is going to come in and talk to us about creating your amazing author press packet. She was asked to present this press packet that goes on for miles when she presented a book that she wrote to a Texas writers conference of some kind. And I, I looked at it and I said, Oh my goodness, I think I would give up, but she put it together. She put it together beautifully. She's willing to hand it to you and to walk you through every step that they ask for. And whether you use that uh, press packet as a marketing packet for you and your organization or for one of your books, like she did, it won't matter. You'll just walk away with a wealth of information on putting together a press or packet or marketing kit. So that's the lineup for July. I couldn't be more excited about it and I'm looking forward to it greatly. Thank you, Kathy, for putting in the NACWI Lakeside Writing Retreat. There'll be one in July and one in November and we've already got people signed up for November as well. So we hope you'll join us. I'm going to zip it and let Roberta come in. We're so grateful that you're doing this. Uh, she asked me, <laughs> she said, what, you know, I don't remember what she asked me, but I froze. 
and realized by the time, and then finally I softened up and warmed up and kind of got rolling and started telling her what some of my hindrances were to telling people what I do, to selling, to making that sale, to telling people what I do. And uh, she was very patient with me, but I was, it, and I thought, boy, do I, of all people, <laughs> need her. What she has is going to present today as much as the next person. So I'm grateful and looking forward to what you have to teach us. And you are on. Thank you for being here. <laughs> well, um, thank you so much, Karen. You are such a blessing. And it is an honor and a privilege to present to this very fine and as highly esteemed group of women of God. Um, we're led by one of the best, so we are motivated to do our best. And so I'd like to share with you this afternoon some of the things that I had to learn the hard way. <laughs> so I'm going to start up the screen share. <clears throat> you know, and we always hope and pray it all goes well. <laughs> So, alrighty, and I will tell you, I want to start by telling you that I made so many mistakes along the way that it was just critical <laughs> to learn what not to do and what I needed to do and needed to do differently. One of the um, benefits to going to business school is that you learn a whole heap. But one of the things they, they, they teach you marketing, say backwards and forward, forwards. However, when it comes to sales, not much. Fortunately, I did have an instructor who uh, had a business, one of my professors, and she did a little segment on spin selling, but that did not quite do anything for me at the time. I really didn't understand the importance of it. So I want to help you not make the mistakes that I made. And the main one was that I knew how to market. I could design programs and ideas for days. But I fail to consistently present, if all at all, present what I had to prospects, to prospective customers. So I want you to have all success in doing this. The objective of this particular presentation, it really is to transform your business into a consistent revenue generating machine. And also the second objective is to challenge you to change some self-defeating behaviors that serve as obstacles to selling more effectively. And then lastly, you're gonna have the opportunity in here to develop a high level, if you will, um, sales and marketing sort of uh, blueprint, looking at your systems and your processes, because that will help you overcome your roadblocks to actually trying to sell to people. Um, there's so much to tell, so I have to just tell what I can, and then um, hopefully we can talk some more, some further. First of all, here are learning objectives we're going to get a clear understanding of what sales is, what sales actually is, and of course the psychology of sales. I wanna make sure when we're done that you understand the difference between sales and marketing, because believe it or not, that's where I got stuck and where a lot of people get stuck. I want you during this session to also look at your vulnerable spots when it comes to selling. And then we're going to talk about your sales process and your systems, and then determine too, I'll give you some guidelines on how to determine whether you need a sales coach to come in and kind of tweak you a little bit. So let's go, let's ride the wave. First of all, I want to talk to you, tell you that a successful sales, excuse me, is all about a little uninvited guest there, um, is all about mindset, process, and systems. I'll say that again. Successful sales is about mindset, process, and systems. Mindset, 
will get you the sales success that you want. But you have to have a well-defined sales process too. And lastly, you have to implement systems. And when I say systems, I mean that you need to implement methods, tools, and technologies to support the, your sales process, whatever that may be. Well, let's start with mindset. Here's the picture of what I probably look like myself some years ago. I had a very low, very low regard for sales and salespeople. Even though I was in technology and worked in marketing with marketing a technology product <laughs> and selling services, I'll tell you how low my regard was. The guy that worked with me and was the salesperson, I referred to him, not to his face, as our sales weasel. Okay? Our sales weasel. <laughs> Note that term. <laughs> because essentially, as far as I saw it, he would always be making deals that we on the delivery side perhaps could not even keep up with. You know, it's like promising somebody a whole car and we haven't even finished the design. And so sales weasels. And I certainly didn't want to be a sales weasel and I don't think you want to be a sales weasel. So we have to get past what our mindset is. And I have to say I've gotten past it and that's part of what I'm sharing with you. Here's a questionnaire as we go through this. When you think of sales, does your head start hurting? Or do you respond in absolute terror? Or do you go in the bathroom wherever you are or just sit at your desk and start crying? And after you do manage to make the sales call, do you feel something like this? That's where I think most of us are. Now I wanna ask you, and you can speak out loud to me, which picture best describes you? Let's see where you are. So if you wanna unmute yourself. I just don't make the call. So I guess the fear one is me. Okay. Uh, I can, t I can, well, the terror one is me, I guess. <laughs> I can do it in a very indirect way, but to be direct about it, I'm just, I lose it. So I, I'm the fear person. I'm the terror person. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> Anybody yeah. typing in the chat room? You can type in the chat room if you don't want to talk verbally. Oh. I'm the confused person. I don't know what to do sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we got confused, Tara. I know that basically sales and the idea of a sales call usually strikes fear in the heart of the fiercest businesswoman. Okay, nobody wants to really do it for the most part because we always see people that we perceive to be really, really good. And like I said to me, they always seem slippery. You know, they dress really good. They look really good. They got all kind of little affirmations all over the place, they say, and they're just bouncing from here to there. And if you can't even mimic that level of energy, you certainly feel inadequate. So where we have to start <laughs> is the battlefield of the mind. And that battlefield blocks us. But there are ways that we can change that. And I'm gonna share some of those uh, very briefly here. Because we have to overcome them in order to, excuse me, in order to actually be successful in sales, and it can be done. You're not stuck where you are, but it may take some of these steps. For example, reframing. Now this I learned uh, along the way because I ended up doing direct sales. I designed jewelry, and I would be at the farmer's market bright and early in the morning with my aunts who are really good at sales, and we're entrepreneurial kind of family in our spirit. So we like to sell things. 
And I'd be at the farmer's market where I'd be dealing with people directly and having the opportunity to deal with these people Saturday after Saturday and uh, directly, it made me get past my fear. Because all of a sudden I realized there was nobody that was going to eat me if I opened my mouth. Nobody was really going to scream at me. I mean, that's how I felt. It was like, oh, you know, you're afraid you say something stupid or somebody will be nasty, but people weren't. And so one of the keys is to think of sales as building relationships with the people that you serve. And in a relationship, you start with an introduction. You don't ask somebody to marry you, Kathy, for example, right? On the first date, you weren't asked to be married to your husband on the first date. You have, to, they're an acquaintance and you have to get to know them and build the trust and the relationship and the respect. You need confidence. And to be honest, like I said, with my example of being at that farmer's market with my jewelry, which is pricey, to be honest, and I was really out of the right market, but here we were. It was an opportunity to sell. You will build confidence the more you do it, thinking that these people, like I said, they are not the Loch Ness Monster. They're not going to swallow you whole. They did not plan their day to see how they could ruin yours because you called them. You know, and all these things that just run through our mind. So what I'm suggesting is you have to find opportunity after opportunity to sell, to practice selling. It may not be your business at first, like mine. It was jewelry design. It wasn't about selling technology or selling services, but having to do that gave me such a confidence that I was open to learning more and building on that confidence that I built, that I, that I gained through that. The key is, and I put here practice, you have to practice, practice, practice. Get in front of a mirror, for example, and just practice. Practice until you want to pass out. <laughs> Practice with your relatives, your friends, even find your enemies. Make sales calls to them. Tell them what you're doing. Tell them to be the most obnoxious customer that they can be. Ask them how, you're, how you come across. And believe you me, we can always count on friends and family to tell us. You have to work on things like your self-esteem. And even though I talked about affirmations, you know, we need them. And as Christian women, we have the Bible to go and draw our affirmations from. There are lots of YouTube videos that have affirmations. But you're going to have to rehearse those before you pick that phone up. Every time you pick that phone up, you may have to rehearse those to, to stay calm. and then. Self-esteem, and I'm getting into to Karen's Billy Wig, but you're going to have to find ways to build up your self-esteem because without it, you do see yourself <laughs> really as we used to call it in substituting the victim of the day. That when you make that call, I mean, that person's just sitting there gunning for you. And there are some that are like that. I've had people hang up on me short. Hey, whatever. <laughs> Keep moving, next person. <laughs> Sometimes, too, um, you need a sales coach. And I say that because I did some sales coaching for this company. And it turned out, like, with one of the, in, one of the um, students, it really was that that sales company had a horrible sales script. And <laughs> when she went to follow it, she went through it like a robot, okay? That is definitely not attractive. That will not build relationship because, you know, you think you're talking to the bionic woman on the other end of the phone. And at the end of this script was, well, do you want to buy A, B, or C? Well, the person never said or got a chance to really make a decision through self-discovery that they needed that. But that comes with, you know, understanding your process. 
Are there any questions on any of this so far? Did you get to coach the weasel? <laughs> no, <laughs> I just stayed, tried to stay clear him, you know. <laughs> he, that was one problem, especially in the computer field we had with the salespeople because we needed a span of time to build a system. And so we knew that, that are in, you, Oh, sorry, go ahead. We knew the, the features that are in the system and they might go out and promise somebody that isn't even promise somebody something that isn't even contained in the system. <laughs> so, you know, we, we really, it was, a, it was challenging. Now, I, stayed, then, I tried to stay clear him. Another question, are you going to talk about scripts later or can we talk about those for just a second? Uh, let's talk about those later. If okay. you'll put the questions off to a little bit later. Yeah. Okay. I won't go in depth today on that. Mm -hmm. But I do want to address the, the questions preliminarily. Yeah. Okay. Here's what you have to think. I am a solution waiting to happen. You can actually save somebody's day if you have the right solution for them. And you do. You have what they need. You can actually become a person, Karen, that actually loves sales. I would have never thought that I would love sales. But once I reframed it, once I could see it from a totally different perspective, I was on, I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. I'm, I'm safe. I feel safe. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is met. And this can be you. And I hope after this presentation, you'll feel like, hey, I could learn to like this stuff. I want you to be able to say this, I got this, I got this. To do that, let's talk about process. And Karen, this is where we can actually put your um, question in. Sales and marketing. And you may say, why are you starting with sales and marketing? Because most people do not understand the difference. And that's where I was. I was doing a fine job marketing, so to speak but not sale, not selling. People tell you in a lot of the trainings about promotional strategies, that's marketing. But once you promote it, you gotta make the connection. Let me summarize the difference between marketing and sales with this particular slide. Marketing is about promotion and lead generation. That's all you want to do you want to fill up the pipeline with potential, potential candidates for your service. That's your only objective. And you do that through things like the web, public relations, email, social media, webcast events. All you're saying is, here I am, come to mama. Okay? That's what you're doing. Sales is about actually taking the leads and making sure you qualify those leads. So sales, you're making direct contact, you're actually engaging with that, that particular um, prospect and starting to build a relationship so they can learn about your solution. Think consultative sales. You're going to be educating them about their options, which you are one of. Okay, now notice too, it's you've got these leads, you're going to qualify them, then you're going to start that deeper relationship where you're understanding what they need and you're looking at what you can provide, and then you're going to present what you have, you know, in a proposal or through a, a, a um, word going blank, through a presentation, an in-person presentation, or even something online like this. The formal definition of sales is that you have a systematic process of repetitive and measurable milestones when you're going to enable the buyer to actually achieve their goal of getting their needs met, getting that needs met. 
I like this definition from Invest Investopedia because it says just what Roberta loves, a systematic, which we're going to talk about, process of repetitive and measurable milestones. I would even change that to say measurable task, measurable activity, so you can evaluate your performance. There are tools that I won't be able to share in this that will actually help you uh, project how many mailing pieces need to go out, how many contacts to make a certain dollar amount, a sales volume of a dollar amount. And I think it's just, it's overwhelming and surprising to a lot of people when they look at those numbers because maybe to make, for example, $150,000, you may have to send out maybe, um, let's say, 20,000 mailings or something. It also depends on the price of your product. And I will add this, the price of your product, the higher it is and more complex it is, the longer it will take to sell it. And that's like in the technology field. People do not just wake up and say, I want to buy a mainframe. Oh, let me just go ahead and fill up my whole office with computers that I don't know what, what's in them or how they work. So it, it takes time. Are there any questions right here? Okay, I call on people too. I've done teaching and faculty work. I will call you out. So I suggest- There are, there are a couple of great comments. Okay. Uh, no, in the, yeah, in the, in the chat room, you see people embracing that. I'm a solution waiting to happen. It's true for believers, too, Danica said. Kim Stedman said they're studying the, in the Right Now, Write More program. They're studying the Prosperity for Writers book. Writing mm -hmm. our firm, positive, and in the now affirmations, repeating them daily. It's amazing how quickly affirmations and the positive words start reframing your brain. We must have needed to hear a double dose of that for sure. Thank and you. then I, you know, so I'm just sitting here thinking, I know you're going to talk to us about the script, but here we are, most of us in here writers, excellent writers, and yet we're not writing. I'm writing everything but a script, you know, so there's, that's where the sales coach comes in is helping you kind of get the sales. Mm -hmm. get that so you're not so intimidated about the call. When um, I, when I got started, in business, I had a friend who had a business but had been in sales for years. And I said, give me a script. I had her actually just write me a script. And, and when I had a program I was trying to promote when I lived in Atlanta, um, I put together a script for my virtual assistant who was making follow-up calls. Mm -hmm. But this is where we can talk about um, a little bit about the sales script. I think it'll, it'll be fine right in here. Here's the part that people do not find out about until it's really too late. The marketing process, as I said, is for generating awareness about you and your product and your brand. Sales has a cycle. And this is where people get into trouble because they think the minute they offer it, people are gonna start buying it. But it starts with prospecting, prospecting, qualifying those prospects, talking to them, they say interview here, demonstrating your wares, validating you know, that they need it, then getting into a discussion, a negotiation, to make sure you're giving them the best offering and they're, of course, going to ask for the best offering and best price. And then you want to be able to close the deal as well as get them to make you referrals. I think one of the other beneficial experiences that I had was early on, I got to work very closely with our IBM sales team. You know, they come in and want to present to us. I worked for United We of America at the time. And I listened and I learned. I learned a lot just talking to them and watching them. <laughs> and uh, I was actually responsible for marketing a technology that United Way of America 
had built. So I traveled around the country presenting and speaking about our technology. And again, once you have to come face to face with people, you begin to get over some of the fears. Okay. I've talked about the process, the sales cycle. I'd like you to take a minute and diagram your sales cycle or sales process, what you have already in place. And then Karen, I'll answer your question. So let me put this back up. So we should probably think of a specific what did if you program, were program product or service not like the whole yeah, yeah right specific product or service and what is your sales process <laughs> so Nika already said her sales process is a big zero for right now there's yeah. our mindset for right that's now that's why we're here okay that's why we're here. so for so a particular okay and even if you can draw what you think you want it to be if you realize hey I don't have one okay because that's one of the questions. Do you have one? So how, many minutes, how many minutes are you giving us? Uh, probably like one. <laughs> so we can keep it. Because we can always revisit some of these things at the end where they're question, in question time. I want to be timely. You know, stay on schedule. I see lots of writing. Okay, give yourself one more minute and then we're gonna wrap this part up. Roberta, may I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. All right, you get your prospect and then you have the word interview as the next step of the cycle. If I did webinar teaching on Facebook, Facebook lives and things like that. To me, I'm skipping to the demonstrate cycle. Is that okay? Because I'm trying to still build my clients and move them to the validation without actually having personal interviews yet. <clears throat> well, asking you are, you are somewhere really between prospect and demonstrate. Mm -hmm. uh, if your objective, if these are people that you do not know and they just sort of find out about your events through a Facebook ad, some of your marketing efforts, then your next step would be prospecting. Okay. If you already know them and they already know about your product, you have already qualified them. And the word interview should really be qualified. This is a, someone else's generic cycle. Okay. And you are already demonstrating. But I would tell you this much, as a part of your process, which we'll talk about in a minute, I would wager, so to speak, that you can give a much deeper level of uh, demonstration if you still add in some qualification after you do this webinar. I got you. That made perfect sense. That helps. Thank you. Good. Okay. All right, everybody, let's see what you got. You can sort of hold it up if you want and just tell me um, what you want. Danica, you got anything? See, I told you I'll call people out. <laughs> oh, you're muted, hon. Just unmute yourself. I'm gleaning information from you and all the rest. <laughs> I'm a beginner. Okay. It's yeah, all she good. said mine is a big zero for right now, but I want it to be a one with a lot of zeros behind it. I mean, <laughs> dreaming big. Melody's uh, in the chat room said, in my network marketing business, we use the acronym, acronym form to build relationships. Ask prospects questions about their F is for family, O is for occupation, R is for recreation, M is more about them. Not until, not you, until you or what you sell, until you build rapport with them. Yeah. I mean, you talked about that, that it's really about building a relationship. I absolutely love that. So good. That is an example of a system. Yeah. So Kathy good. said she's making a lame attempt, but she's got, are you going to share it with us? Or are you just going to okay, tell us, tell us about your, I give up. 
I give up. My, that's my problem is I give up. I miss inter- your picture because all we can hear, we can't hear your voice. I'm oh, sorry. You. I go. introduce it. I show why it works, but I, I let go mm-hmm. too soon. Okay. Yeah. I don't ask for the sale. I don't close. Um, I don't go back and follow up um, or negotiate or I, I just kind of, and I, I was sales support for 13 years. I know how it's supposed to go, but I feel like I'm already um, overbearing in my personality and I don't want to run people off. And so I tend to like, back off to the point to where I don't make the sale. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that goes back to, you know, what I was saying about the mindset and self-esteem. I don't find you overbearing and I, you know, I interact with you pretty much every day. So that self-perception is getting in the way and you would have to release it to be able to move forward. I mean, you can really change, reframe it to, I am very passionate about whatever I do or promote. And then, you know, you're managing your passion and your enthusiasm. You're not seeing yourself as kind of, you know, smothering somebody. Come here. You got to buy this. (laughs) Now. (laughs) I want to say you need this. (laughs) <laughs> but I tend to back off. Well, think passion. Don't think overbearing. And one of the things, I, I'm going to talk more about it in the sales process in just a moment, but you need a number of touches with a prospect to get them to actually become, you know, next a suspect and then actually a buyer. Yeah. So it's, you can start, you know, kind of molly and then be more passionate, more passionate, more passionate. You have an opportunity to do more than make one impression. That's what I meant. Anybody else want to share their thank you, Kathy. Anyone else want to share their information at all? If not, we can like I said hit it even at the end. So Melody also said the tricky part is not to fire hose people by giving them too much information about your product or service before they are ready. And that's one of the things we're afraid of doing. That's what, what Kathy's saying. I think that she's afraid of doing. I found this exercise to be enlightening and I thought, okay, um, in July, we're going to do a, we've got the whole thing about writing and a writing retreat and that sort of thing, but we're also going to do a special membership drive so that people who join NACWI can come to the conference at a greatly reduced price. Uh, All they'll have to pay for is their meals. And Mm. so I I did it. I don't know. Oh, cool. So, I mean, but I thought, okay, prospects. I mean, our list is huge. My email list is huge and I am not taking, I'm not using it wisely. Go ahead. Oh, then I put for qualifying, I put interviewing and then I loved it that you said qualifying because at first when I put interviewing, I thought, how can I talk to that many thousands of people through, but then qualifying, I thought, well, through newsletter, making a video, interviewing someone about what NACWI has meant to them. Demonstration, we have uh, made an orientation video so you can kind of take a sneak peek at what you get. Validation is people's testimonies and endorsements. The negotiation is the deal. The deal is if you join now, you get this special price for the conference. Closing is the sales conversation and closing the sale. You know, so I somehow I have to invite them to talk to me. I don't do that well. That's but I, but let's I add, this, hang on. add this statement, Karen. Right now, little phrase, I, I do not see myself as doing that well. However, I'm going to better equip myself. (laughs) You see? You got the difference? I had to do shorthand, but you know, yeah. I mean, I have a way of doing that. I have the tools to do that. I just haven't put it out there. I'm putting it out there. That's what I'm writing down. I'm putting. And then referrals. I thought, you know, we already have an affiliate program. It's all in place. Click a button, it takes about five seconds, done. 
we've got the referral part down. We really have this in place. It's just a matter of me taking some steps. Good. good. I invite you all to actually take a picture of the um of your cycle and actually just email it to me and you can email it to me at r b fontroy can you type that in the yeah. chat room for me r at b b fontroy at yahoo.com and i'll be happy to give you some thoughts and comments some feedback you have to be able to read it it's a little messy uh -huh. it'll be all right don't worry about that karen perfectionism cost money all right here it comes <laughs> when karen gave her example on the validate she used the idea of bringing in ref references and testimonials are you validating what you do or are you validating the client it you know what it's really validating that the client needs what you have but Part of it is self-discovery for that client because they need to come as you're going through all these little steps. You want, just like in coaching, I'm trained as a life coach, you need to help them discover that this is the direction they need to go. And we do that by doing what? Asking powerful questions rather than just talking at them, rather than a lot of stuff. I think too, though, what Karen brings in can be helpful in that you can use it there because you're showing them people just like them. Yes. And this is how they benefit it. True. Yeah. And it's like, oh, then Thank in the self discovery, they will be like, oh, you know what? That my company's just like that. I could use that. So let's move on because I want to get you through everything. So we did our diagram. System is the next part. And in here, Karen, ask your question about sales script. One of the things that you need to understand is that there is what is called <laughs> customer, a customer's buying behavior and buying process. Okay, and this diagram actually kind of gives you an idea the customer starts thinking first. The customer realizes, I need something. Then they start looking at the options. You are there. If you build relationships, you'll be there to be an option. And then you will help them again, like I said, through self-discovery, powerful questions, your ongoing education through your seven, is typically the number seven touches. And I will add, you want to plan out the seven touches. I, I wish I could show it to you today, but for a sales campaign, I have, I have literally mapped it out from step one, from touch one to touch seven. What's going to happen, whether it's an email, a phone call. And I want to say, as much as we dread the phone calls, don't hide behind social media. It has its place in the sales process. And it's nice if it can introduce you to people, but to build a relationship and make it warm and fuzzy, you need to talk to that person. You need to talk to them. And I'll, I'll tell you how you can get the conversation going uh, in just a moment. But as I said earlier, marketing gets you the lead. The sales opportunity is what you then pursue and understand there's a sales cycle. The minute you make the contact or the call, it's not going to turn into the thousand dollar, you know, purchase or whatever people want to tell you. It can take months, maybe even years to, <laughs> Karen's like rats, to, <laughs> to get them. Brought. But the more you have built a strong relationship with them by consultative selling, educating them and relating to them. And engaging them and that's where the social media comes in you can use it as a tool to engage or educate it can be an introductory uh, tool more in the marketing end of things but do not it was not designed for sales it was designed to connect and engage and that's why people don't get results through social media too sometimes I believe because they don't understand 
or recognize what the tool was designed for. Go ahead, Karen. Your question. And so social media, you can use it for introductions, but mostly it's for engaging in what? What was the other part? It, it's really for engaging and educating. Oh, okay. It's it's a it's expanding your relationship with the person. I have so much I want to share, but I, I can't get it all in right now. I, because you might have to do a part two. I I think so. I, I mean, I could do a part two. I love this stuff. Okay. Part twenty. <laughs> well, there's something called the Winder Days to More Clients and the uh, MBA Demand Institute, and that's why I'm you doing it because I need to shove all this stuff in there. Okay. I may have gotten oh, back up. Okay. Um, in systems, I want to talk about two more, two more points here. It helps to stay with your notes. <laughs> make sure, one, you, you make sure that you have systems in place, like I said, methods, technologies, and tools. And when Karen was talking about your um, like mastermind groups, I was on a training last night and I mean, that guy was just rolling out tools and I didn't know these tools and it's really good to be exposed to a lot of as many people as you can. It's good to listen to as many of those YouTube videos as you can and learn about tools. Let me give some examples. Um, the form method that was mentioned is an example of a system. It tells you what to do from one point to the other. I did network um, marketing stuff, and that's my company lacked that. They lacked that. And so you, they, their idea was just basically pass out your flyers to anybody you see anywhere. But that's so random. And one of the things is you need to know who. Make sure you are selling to the right market. So you can learn to speak their language what, and understand what they need to know. Plan, another system is to plan your sales calls. Plan them, write out what you wanna say. Like I said, and practice it, practice it, practice it. Be willing to take constructive criticism. Your family's probably one of the best places to get that because they're gonna lay into you. That's stupid, I wouldn't buy it, blah, blah, blah. Um, but you wanna do that. Karen, uh, you had a question about sales scripts. This is probably a good place to answer that. What was your question, Karen, about sales scripts? Well, I don't know if I have a question. You know, I had already asked you earlier when you were picking my brain and I was so freaked out, I apologize. You had uh, a baby. <laughs> I had a baby, <laughs> baby. I to, but, uh, you know, I mean, I just, I think I was just blown away by, I don't want a sales script to sound salesy or to sound scripted, either one. And so, but we're writers. Oh, everyone in here is a writer. Danica even writes music. And I mean, like, why is that such a, why do, can't, why do I think that I can't, what I'm realizing as I, you're talking to me and the other day when you talked to me is I can write a sales script that is, Loving you. and engaging. And, and right, and it's you. It's yes, you. Yeah. Don't compare. Okay, here's a little note. Please make note to self here. Do not compare yourself with the sales phantom. <laughs> Do not compare yourself with the sales phantom. That is the person who, in your mind, does it perfectly and so when you do it you have to do it like them no be a, this is the other part be authentic be exactly who you are that's part of building relationship how you approach sales has to reflect you these people need to know what it will be like to spend the rest of their life with you right that's how the dating thing goes you're dating them okay if you want to think of it that way. And instead of bringing roses, you're bringing your product at the end of it. Relate, relate. You all seem like such nice people. I would be glad to get to know you better. Now, how do you do that? I, I do want to throw this tip out. Um, I made a note to myself. Give the prospect a reason to talk with you. That is one thing I have learned along the way. 
as I said, I had one of the, the trainees, I mean, she was so nervous and so uncomfortable making these calls that there was no life in it. She sounded like a robot. And yet when she stepped away from the script, she was very animated and personable and pleasant. I'm going to tell you, I had to, you know, bring that to her like, look, no, no, no. This is who you really are. Let's, let's change this. Let's do it, you know, according to who you are. But the other thing I shared with her, and I will share this with you all, I told her to get some pictures of people, post them up on her wall, and since she was talking to them only by telephone, look at those people, and that's who you're talking to. Talk to those people. Because now it's not just some robotic, you know, electronic process that's going on. You're actually looking at people. And thinking, there's a human on the end of this. They got to feed their kid. They got to walk their dog. They pull up their pants just like me. And as I said, they're not going to what? Let's all repeat this together. They're not going to eat me. Can you say that? They're not going to eat me. <laughs> they did not wake up today with a mission of ruining my day. So what you do, for example, is that you might call them, say, for example, one of the strategies I use, you call them to invite them to something. You create a something, typically like some virtual event like Angela has, and by golly, it's, it's old-fashioned, it's old school, but you pick up the phone. <laughs> Hello, may I speak with blah, blah, blah. And if you're real nervous, it's fine to leave a voicemail after hours. <laughs> Okay, just so you talk and they can hear you. And you can do your little introduction and sell scrippy thing right there. But I wanted to invite you. Who doesn't like to do parties? We love to do parties and we love to invite people, most women, you know, to something. <clears throat> and uh, think of it more that way. Reframe it. <clears throat> You're calling to invite them. Or you could do something like, and literally review their company, learn some things about that person and say something like, I've been studying your success and I'd like to contribute to more success. May I send you an article or whatever it is, excuse me. Again, I have an unwanted guest that keeps flying around here. May I send you an article? Now I'm gonna prepare you, get ready for the no, Get ready for the nasty people because they think in their mind of a sales weasel on the other end. But do not be afraid to say, wait, wait, wait. I know you're thinking of a sales weasel, but I'm not one. I'm a person just like you. And I just want to give you something good. Relate. Ask permission. That's key to provide any further information. And do not sell on the first sales call. Introduce yourself. Talk. Karen is so nice. I mean, I think if she calls somebody, they're going to want to talk to her. And you're a good conversationalist. Don't say, well, how's the weather? We will get into that in another call, but don't use stuff like that. Be authentic. Um, I think we're just about out of time. Oh, another one is I have a Facebook group. You know, I was reviewing your website. I looked at you. I have got a Facebook group that I think would, you would just be a great match for. And also now, we don't add, we don't let it just everybody into that group. But I've looked at your qualifications and I think you would be a good match. Can I send you an application or tell you how to apply to be in the group? You're elevating their status. So, are there any questions? Because I know it's time to wrap up. So I went ahead while you were talking. Uh, if anybody else pops in, well, I don't want to uh, talk over you. But so uh, I'll, I'll see if you unmute you. I went ahead and did what would the set you said plan your seven touches, and I thought, okay, just give a stab. I sent you that too. I'm expecting Ooh, anything. Yeah, anything you send me, I'll look at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because Maybe I thought I don't even know what the seven touches would be, but I think I mapped it out. 
Yeah. I mean, we're so great ladies at Christmas parties and graduation events. You know, we really take time and think about how to make that a pleasant experience for our recipient. You can do the same. You can do the same. And if you need to, host a tea party, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You can make it fun. I'm inviting you to a tea party. I'm sending the tea. And I'm sending you a little workbook. I'm going to email your workbook. And then come on over it, and I'm going to share some things. That's great. Make, uh, yeah, be, be, be people. Just be a human. So much. Like I said, do not hide behind social media. Let it be your how I stay connected to you afterwards. Uh, lastly, I do want to point out, you want to think about where you need help. What kind of support do you need? to change your mindset, to develop a process, to um, identify the right systems. And systems are, are methods, tools, and technologies. Mm -hmm. Accord occasionally, you might need a sales coach. Guess who wants to share that and be volunteer with you to help you? Well, that would be me. You but anyway, <laughs> you can learn more about me at robertafontre.com. And I've set up this real special program that I'm, I'm really excited about because I love doing this. Executive, the MBA on demand, that's me, Executive Strategy Intensives. Now, if you go over to my site, go to the page on VIP Executive Strategy. Go there and fill out the application. I'll take a look at it because I make sure we fit. And then if you choose one of these executive strategy days, I have multiple, and you decide by tomorrow night to actually take advantage of the special opportunity I'm going to present you for being in this seminar, I got more and more and more and more to share with you. If you want to call me and talk to me, go ahead. We'll take 30 minutes and just talk on afterthoughts. And if I need to do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom with you over the 30 minutes to go back over something, I'm willing to do that too. So I just want to say thank you so much and let you know that there is life after self. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to die. They're not going to eat me. I think I'm going <laughs> to <laughs> Big <laughs> monster creature, you know, beast. <laughs> no, no. You can tame that beast. Well, thank you, ladies. Are there any other questions I can answer? Anybody popping in? We had a little conversation about, which was fun, about Melody said, uh, it's sometimes you only have 30 seconds to really grab someone's attention. If you didn't grab it, you might have lost them. And I, I said, oh, my gosh, I'm in trouble. I'm a Texan. It takes me three minutes to say hello. So where did the 30 seconds go? <laughs> No, that's fine. They'll, Other people could relate to that. You're so engaging. <laughs> but you know what? If they start trying to cut you off, you say, oh, you know what? I know you're busy. Let me cut to the chase. Yeah. I want to invite you to something special. I like that. I want to give you something. Um, I do my, doing my TV show and radio show, the reason I can talk to just about anybody is because I'm not calling to ask them to do something for me. I'm calling to offer them an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm doing something for them. And you better believe CEOs on down there interested in talking to me. So I think Danica popped in. Do you want to have some, do you want to say something and then I'll pray us out? This has been oh, great. I just want to say thank you, Roberta, for yeah. listening to us, getting us motivated to think through sales, make a plan, write it down, share it with each other. Yeah. I didn't know it was going to be fun. Did you? <laughs> I had fun with Roberta. Don't you know that? I should have known. <laughs> Thank you. Perceptionist, perceptionist sales. Thank you, Danica. Thank you, Angela, for being on this call. Thank you, Kathy. I finally figured out how to get into the chat room. I was not going to try that. Okay, but I just figured well, it out. You can't, you can't do it and speak at the same time. You almost need a second hand, right? Somebody yeah. said, great information and presentation. Thank you, Roberta, for slaying it. You're the slayer, the sales slayer now. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, and there was one more person I didn't. What, 
the other person's name that I'm missing? Let me see if I can find her comments. She was, is it Kim? Melody? Melody. Thank you, Melody, yeah. for being here. So much great stuff in here. Uh, so y'all, if you want to save the chat room, if there was something in there you wanted, you act like you're going to type a chat to everyone, click the more drop down button and say save chat and it'll save it for you if you needed information out there. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. I also take pictures of things with my phone, of course. But phone -a Thank you so much for this. Yeah. You we'll bring do, out the best in people. We'll do more. So we, I, she had, when I have to say this before we go, I know we're late. When I asked her to speak, she sent me a packet, a sales packet, a presentation packet. I've never seen one of those before. I know I've lived under a rock for a while. It was so well done. And so what I asked her to do, I think she's thinking of doing is having a VIP day on her own at robertafontroy.com where she can share how to put that together for us because I didn't send her, you know, I send out a little flimsy guidelines to everybody who's going to present and I give them a uh, membership in NACWI because I want to continue to hear from them, want people to be able to go back and forth with them. But I'm, I've never seen a presentation packet like that before. Pretty blown away. I hope you will do that VIP day and invite everyone of us and NACWI to it because we all need to have that put together. And ready to go at a moment's notice. When she said yes, she sent me this packet. Amazing. Good stuff. Thank you, Roberta. Let me pray for us. Father God, we're so grateful. You know, we do have something to offer. We have solutions to people's problems. It's why you called us to do what we do. And may we do it, Lord, in ways that bring you glory and honor every step of the way. May we do what you've called us to do in ways that draw people to you again and again and again just because of the joy and passion that we have uh, because of the obedience that we have um, put forth to do what you've asked us to do we thank you lord so many of us are behind cute computers so to be able to see each other's faces and hear each other's voices and and learn from one another builds this community educates us gives us networking opportunities and and then entices us to do more of what you've called us to do. We are grateful, grateful, grateful for this opportunity. We pray a special blessing over Roberta, over her health, over her business and ministry, over her passions, over what you've given her to do as well. And we're forever grateful, Lord. Thank you so much. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. God Amen. bless you and God bless our July. Here we go. We have one more educational opportunity tomorrow if you pop in on Wednesday from me. And then we'll be heading out to July. God bless you. And we'll catch you next time.